Okay, folks, so this is an authentic sheep herder wagon. Uh, and this one uh, belongs to a neighbor of mine, and it was built by his grandfather back in the 1950s. Uh, and he, he used it uh, for many years up in the mountains. He would take his uh, herd of sheep up in the mountains, and then he would stay for two or three months uh, just living in this shepherd wagon and, while he took care of his sheep, moving them from grazing area to grazing area when it was free-range free, free range grazing, and we still do that in this area. Now, this is built on uh, what they call a hay wagon frame, uh, which has four wheels, where I'm building on a two-wheel trader this has four wheels because it was a lot heavier construction they didn't have traders like we had back then they had to pretty much make their own traders and this was designed to be pulled by horses so it has a tongue out here and then they would have uh horse harnesses for towing these up in the mountains with their horses and moving around or they could move them with a truck or they could move them with a uh, tractor back then but usually they were hauled by horses now this is a very simple design as you can see uh, it, it just kind of has sort of a rounded top they weren't completely rounded they actually used an octagonal type shape and then they would uh, roof these with roofing tin and they even did the front and backs with roofing tin and you can see that they go up and over the trailer and then you can sort of see in the picture here you can see a uh, a box it's kind of in the shadows here but you can kind of see a box uh, which was used for storage for their tools and stuff like that. And I've actually been inside this because they uh, had it on display at a restaurant, and I got inside and looked around at all the inside. It had a big old wood stove, huge wood stove, probably larger than you would ever need in a place like this. But you can see the wood stove, uh, stove pipe sticking up above it there. A real narrow door, and then it had a bed on the end, and it just had some uh, basic cabinets uh, for storing your food stuff, and they mostly cooked outside, or in the wintertime they might cook in the you know, on top of the wood stove, but they would probably have a campfire and cook outside. And so that's how they got the name of these as a wagon, and these were used by sheep herders, and then eventually became the uh, Gypsy Vardos. Now this is my trailer that I'm going to be using, and I got this trailer oh about ten years ago I think. And uh, I got it from a guy, he was moving, and he'd been using it to haul his uh, ATVs and snowmobiles. And it's a heavy duty trailer, even though it's on 12 inch wheels, the sides are steel. It's got steel sides on it, and it's 5 by 8 trailer. Now, Okay folks, so this is my shepherd wagon design, and uh, this is based on the 5 by 8 uh, Lowe's or Home Depot trailer. Now my trailer is a bit different than this because it's got higher sidewalls so I'm gonna have to modify my plans and your trailer may be size too so just keep that in mind as you're uh, going through this that you may need to modify it for this type of trailer that you are using now I uh, designed this a little bit differently than the uh, the old style Vardo or shepherd wagon in that I use what they call a barn style roof this is much easier to build than a round style roof. Now this is designed to be built out of uh, plywood or you can use other materials. I'm going to be building mine out of half inch plywood. And you can see that this has a really, it ha just has a really nice shape to it. Uh, I like this old style shape and I show it here with a double dutch door, which is a door that's split in the middle so the top can be opened up with a window in it and the bottom can be left closed. Uh, I have designed it here with what they call chuck boxes which is these boxes that are on the sides here so that you can store your tools and stuff like on it. Okay, so this uses 2x3 or 2x4 construction for the framing and plywood or whatever material you want for the exterior. So here you can see the roof framing, uh, which is just a, a very simple octagonal type uh, barn roof style. And what I did is I box in the, the uh, top of the roof framing and the, the uh, walls, I get, again, are plywood and uh, or whatever material that you want to use. Plywood is probably best, and I'm using half-inch plywood. And then you can see that it has framing members that go across, and the, the ends that go up over the wall are framed in and boxed. And these uh, the sides, because of the way that the front is cut and it is attached to the floor, all of the side panels, sidewall panels, are attached directly to the floor framing so that it's all one unit and then tied together. And because these are all solid uh, plywood panels here, they support the side so you don't have to worry about these sides sagging, which is one of the problems I've seen with other Vardo designs. Okay, and here you can see how I plan on doing the interior of this. 
and this is just for ideas but uh, what I would like to have in my uh, shepherd wagon is a dry sink which is a sink without a drain you simply put in one of those tubs a wash tub you drop that in there fill that up with water for washing dishes or whatever and I'm going to use my I'm going to use a lot of the equipment that I use in my cabin that is designed for 12 volt I have an Alpacool refrigerator that will slide right under a unit like this and then I've got a little uh, wardrobe with a couple of uh, open cabinets and drawers now this is all coming down the road I won't do this right away but this is my plans for this shepherd wagon so I can use it to, for uh, camping and also if somebody wants to, to use it as a guest room, when they come over they can stay at my uh, cabin and I'll have a really nice place for a guest room. And uh, so I show this with a desk, uh, but it, instead of a desk I'm probably going to put in that, a small wood stove right here and uh, a, probably a shorter, maybe a shorter pantry cabinet here. And then I show this with a nice fancy uh, over-the-top Vardo style rounded opening uh, over this three foot bed now I probably won't do that in mine but you can see that's a really nice feature uh, you can put curtains in front of this and give it that Vardo style and I show this with a twin bed where I'm going with a cot mattress bed which will actually give me more room it's about 10 inches narrower it will give me more room in here uh, what I'd like you to do today uh, is go to my website simplesolarhomesteading.com Click on that top link for the Shepherd Wagon and download some free plans. That way, as I'm building this, you'll be able to follow along with the plans. And again, this is a unit that can be built on a trailer or off of a trailer. And the plans show you how to build it either way. All right, folks, I hope this is enough uh, uh, to get you thrilled and excited to watch this project as I build it over the, the next few weeks. And uh, please do subscribe and like my channel and uh, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. All kinds of cabin plans and cabins that have been built by uh, clients on there that you might enjoy. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Hey, today is the day we get started building on this Shepherd Wagon Vardo project. Uh, so I hope you're as excited as I am. I went and got my materials. I got my, some, some, some screws and some things that I needed to build on it so I can get started on this. And uh, as I'm going along on here, I hope that you went and got the plans so that you can follow along. Uh, go, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com, right at the top. Click at the link. Download the plans. The plans are completely free, folks, so there's no reason for you to not get them. And that way you can follow along as I'm building this. And uh, one of the things that uh, you may need to do, like I needed to do, is you may need to modify the plans for your size of trader. So I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Uh, so this is what we're going to be working on. This is the trader that I'm going to be building on. Now, I thought this was a 5x8 trader. That's why I think the guy told me when I bought it. However, I, you know, I should have measured it out because it actually is not a 5x8 trader. And the inside of this is only uh, 4 foot 4 inches, but it is 8 feet long. So I had to modify my own plans, and that's okay. If you get an old trader like this, it may not be the full 5x8, but you can still build this uh, shepherd wagon on one of these traders as long as it's fairly close so that you have enough width on the bottom to be stable, okay? And so you could probably build this even on a 4-foot trader uh, if it has sides on it. If you don't have sides on it, it's going to be a bit tippy, so I wouldn't build it on anything less than a 4-foot uh, trader with sides on it. Now, my trader is... Uh, has different features uh, dimensions than the Lowe's trailer that I designed the plans for this trailer is uh, like I said four foot four inches wide it also has 17 inch sides you can see these side panels here these panels here are 17 inches up to the top and it's got that rail up there so in the Lowe's trailer I think I, it, it's only 12 inches to the sides and so you, you'll have to adjust for your measurement so I'm gonna have to adjust my measurements up to 17 inches and if you need to do that on your trailers make sure you do it before you start cutting okay and also I'm going to be doing my floor framing uh, a little bit differently is in that I'm going to run the uh, the uh, joist I'm gonna run the joist lengthwise which I'll explain here in a minute why I'm gonna do that and I'm also going to make it instead of the full 8 foot width or 8 foot length I'm going to make it just a little bit shorter because I'm going to use 8 foot panels on the roof where in the plans I uh, put in 9 foot panels so that you could go the full 8 foot length. Uh, it will save me a little bit money if I only use the 8 foot panels and I don't care about a large overhang on the front like I designed in the plans. So if you want to modify that in your plans you can. Okay so what you're going to need for this project 
is uh, you're gonna need some lumber, of course, and I got my two by four by eights. Now I'm going to be doing the floor uh, framing out of two by fours, uh, and then the the uh, wall framing is all going to be done out of two by threes. So I've got enough two by fours here to do my floor framing and also some extras because I'm still working on that mudroom project. And so I'm gonna use them for that, and I'm gonna use that for the floor framing, and then you're gonna need uh, plywood. And uh, I recommend the half inch or what they call 15 30 second inch uh, plywood and I went and got uh, seven sheets of that which is enough to get me through all should get me through the floor and the, all the walls uh, pretty much and so dang plywood's expensive these days it cost me almost twenty two dollars for a sheet of plywood I remember when you used to get that for like twelve dollars a sheet not too many years ago so you know it's expensive but you know if you get plywood it also paints up nice and it will last longer in the weather than the osb if you want to use, use osb you can uh, however just remember that it's probably uh, going to need to be painted a lot more often than plywood would so i'm going to be using plywood so what else you need for this project you're going to need some tools some basic tools uh, i've got a uh, drill driver right there trusty black and decker uh, drill driver for driving screws. I got my uh, skill saw uh, or what they just call a, a uh, cutoff saw there, uh, Ryobi brand. And you're going to need a uh, square of some type. And you can just get these at the dollar store. And I've got a couple of them because I'm always losing one. And so you need a, uh, a square that either has metric if you're one of those people from a country that goes in metric, or I'm going to be doing things in inches, so you will need to convert things in the plans to to metric if you want to use metric, okay? Because I don't do metric. All right. Uh, we're in stupid U.S. schools. We only learn inches and stuff like that here. Okay, so you need a square, and you'll need a tape measure, of course. Uh, something, uh, you know, that'll do at least eight feet of measuring a tape measure. Okay, and then you're going to need some screws this project. And for the, uh, oops, I dropped it. For the uh, framing, I'm going to be using 3-inch screws. Now, you can use nails, but uh, uh, if you haven't worked with nails and that, they're a lot harder to work with for beginners than screws are. And uh, this is a lot faster, so I use screws on projects like this. So you need 3-inch screws to go through the 2x4s into another 2x4 to give enough length to reach in through it. So you need 3-inch three, three screws for that. And then you're going to need 1.5-inch screws. You're going to need one and a half inch screws to go through the two by four or through the uh, sheathing through the plywood uh, for uh, to put the sheathing attached to the framing. So those are one and a half inch screws. And uh, for this project, I just got a pound. I got a pound of the one and a half inch screws and a half a pound of the three inch screws, which is enough to get me by for a long time. And if I need more, then I can go get them. And the only other thing you need is a beverage of your choice. I got my coffee and I'm going to be drinking on this while I work on this floor framing. So I'm going to go ahead and put these 2x4s up here and then I'll show you how I cut those real quickly and explain uh, a little bit more on this project. Okay folks, I'm ready to start building this uh, shepherd wagon on this trailer. But I highly recommend before you start building is that you give your trailer a really good uh, thorough inspection to make sure that it's solid and can handle uh, the weight and also that uh, everything is going to hold together as you're going down the road. Now this trailer is old, it's probably 30 years old or so. And uh, when I got it, the guy just had this front, he had a uh, come along strap hooked along. And so I went looking, and I'm like, why the heck has he got that strap on there? And uh, what, I don't know why he did this, but the bolts had broken loose from the top here. And he just didn't replace the bolts. He said he put a come along to hold the sides together. And that's all that was holding the front of this trailer together. So I went and replaced the bolts. That's the first thing I did. And I checked to make sure that he did, had, did, didn't lose any other bolts on this trailer. And so I had to replace the front bolts on both sides to make sure. And now it's good and solid. This thing's really solid. Uh, and it's also squared up now so that it, the framing will all fit in there because it was all skewampus before. And uh, make sure you check your tongues and your bolts and make sure that you have safety chains and that your ball is the right size for the hitch. And uh, other things to look for is to if you've got any serious rust. And you can see that this trailer has a little bit of rust. It's not real bad. It's mostly surface. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about that right now. I've got a friend that does sandblasting and eventually I'll have him probably sandblast this all down and we'll put some paint on it. But it's not structural rust, it's just surface rust. Uh, I checked all the framing bolts, I checked the, uh, the spring bolts, made sure everything is nice and tight. 
and you want to do that even if you get a brand new trailer because you know they they have uh, teenagers putting those together nothing wrong with teenagers but they have guys that are putting those together that rush to put the trailers together even when they're new so go over everything go over all your bolts and everything make sure that you have uh, whatever lights are required for your state and uh, you will also need a uh, the electrical hookup to hook it up to your truck and you can buy those if you don't have one already attached to your truck which a lot of vehicle or vehicle whatever they don't and they're they just come uh, it's called a Hopkins this is called a Hopkins towing solution that's just a four pole round kit and it comes with the connector for the uh, vehicle and it comes with the connector for the trailer and my wiring as you can see is hanging down there and doesn't have a connector on it so I'm going to have to install this but there's no hurry on that but I'm going to be installing that so that I can hook it up to the truck and uh, now we're ready to build now you can see that I took the floor panels out because the floor panels were some really old uh, half inch plywood and they were bowed and warped and weren't put in there right so one of the first things I need to do is I'm going to cut those floor panels and reinstall those and then I can start working on the floor uh, framing and I will show you the floor framing here and as soon as I get that done okay folks I'm uh, building the uh, floor framing now for the uh, Shepherd wagon Bardo and uh, as you can see I've got uh, the plywood I had to replace those old sheets of plywood they were in bad shape so I cut some half inch plywood and uh, filled in with those uh, to give it a nice even platform across and just looks a lot nicer underneath there and then I'm building the frame out of 2x4s. I'm doing my frame out of 2x4s. Now, like I said, this trailer is not the uh, same dimensions as the Lowe's trailer that I put in the plans. And your trailer may be different, too. So what I want to tell you is just I want to make sure that you understand that you need to leave enough room on the sides of your frame that you can get your side panels all the way down to the floor because your frame acts as the structural support for all of the sidewalls. So it's important that you have enough room that you can be able to put the uh, side panels on on both sides so I've left just a little over a half inch which is my uh, plywood is a half inch thick so that way when I put the plywood on the sides it will fit up nice and snug but not so tight that I can't get it slided in and out against these side walls here and then I'm making my as I told you I'm making my frame just a little shorter than eight feet about four inches shorter that way I can use eight foot uh, ceiling panels uh, without having to cut off anything from the ceiling panels. Now I'm using, I'm running my uh, joist this direction and then I'm going to stub in, because I've got extra pieces down here that I cut off, I'm going to stub in across uh, with some, some stubs across the floor joist uh, so that when I lay my panel down, because my panel is going to be just a little bit longer than four feet, so I've got to go four feet and then I've got four inches over here. So by stubbing in I'll have something to screw that down to all the way along to give it a nice firm support and th doing it this way saved me one two by four now that may not sound like much but uh, you know a two by four that's like three three dollars and fifty cents so you know if it saves me that much and it still gives me the same support uh, then I'm gonna always go for the solution that saves me a little bit of money so that's as far as I've gotten probably all I'm going to do uh, for today and tomorrow uh, what I'm gonna do is I, I will actually screw these ends together and then I'll pull it out because I'm not going to try and put the side panels on I can't put the side panels on while it is in the uh, uh, trader. So what I'm going to do is uh, just do the ends on this, put the frame together on the ends, and uh, then I and put the stubs in, and then I will pull it out, and I'm actually just going to work on it on the floor. I'm going to put some blocks down here, I'm gonna, or work on it on the ground. I'm going to put some blocks down here and work on the rest of this on the ground. I just put it in here so I could make sure that I was going to have enough room and make sure everything was going to fit. All right, folks, that's it for this video. In the next video, I will have the floor framing and done and sheathed. And uh, we will, and probably have the sidewall panels cut, so you can see how that is going. So that's uh, that's how we're working on this uh, Shepherd Wagon Vardo. Again, if you don't have the plans, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Up at the top, click on the link and get you a set of free plans so you can follow along because you're really going to enjoy this and learn a lot from this build if you have the plans in front of you. All right, folks, have a great day. Well, hey, folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, time to get back working on this uh, Shepherd Wagon Vardo. Uh, I had to take a few days off because I did a silly thing and threw my back out. While I was hauling all the sheet lumber and the 2x4s and 2x3s for this project, uh, <laughs> I, I managed to throw my own back out. And so I had to take a few days off and try to recover for that. And what I've decided to do to make this a lot easier for me to work on, because I might have to do a lot of it from sitting in a chair, is I've got this set up on uh, some some stands and I'm just using a couple of old chairs that I have here and a bench 
This will also make it easier as you can see it's a little bit higher than the trailer and I'm going to be building most of this on the ground. So I'm going to uh, do the floor and this, all the side walls uh, and then paint it on the ground and then I will slide it into the trailer uh, to finish the roofing. So what I've got done here today is uh, I showed you in the last video how I did the floor framing and the floor framing is just a little bit wider and like I told you you have to, to uh, adjust the plans to fit your trailer because not all trailers are alike. I designed the plans for the uh, 5 by 8 um, Lowe's trailer and my trailer is not quite 5, five by 8 uh, it's a little bit off an odd size so what I've got here is I've got a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet uh, on my framing but my framing is going to be shorter than that now you can see I've got a an edge down here that I'm going to cut off and these are four foot sheets so I'm going to cut it back to here and then I'm going to use that piece that I cut off I'm going to cut that into two pieces to go on to here on this side over here so I'll actually cover this entire thing with one sheet of 7 16 OSB I decided to go with the OSB on the floor because plywood paneling uh, that I got it was almost twenty three dollars a sheet where this is only like eleven dollars a sheet it's less than half of what I pay for pay for plywood and I don't really need plywood on the floor OSB is what they use on floors anyway and I'm going to be putting hardwood flooring on top of this so it's not nobody's going to see it it's not going to matter so I went with the OSB on the floor you could use plywood if you want so my project for today is I need to cut this edge off right here and uh, finish up that uh, floor sheathing and uh, I'm just attaching this with screws and uh, you, you want to put your screws in about every 16 inches. Then after I get this uh, floor, floor all sheathed, we can start working on the side, side walls. And the end wall is what I'm probably going to do first. So I'm going to do this end wall, and I'm probably going to do half of it, and then the sides, side walls, and half of that. And I'll show you, I'll explain why I'm doing it that way, because it just makes it easier to put the framing together on this. Uh, for this project. All right, folks, that's how far I've got today. I hope you stick with me. And uh, now I'm going to cut this end off, finish up the floor, and then we can start working on the sidewalls. While I'm working on this uh, Shepherd Wagon Vardo, I thought I'd better show you the rigs that I'm going to be pulling this with. This is my uh, Overlander rigs. That is a, a 90YJ Jeep, and that is my Coleman CT 2000 EX mini bike. And I want to be able to use, take both of these along when I uh, take that uh, shepherd wagon and so I'm designing the shepherd wagon so that the door and, and the opening in the middle will be big enough for me to put in this uh, Coleman mini bus. Instead of wasting gas on the Jeep when I want to get back in the really tight trails I take that mini bike and I even have saddlebags on it and I have a uh, GoPro mount for the front of it and I even have a little trailer back there you can kind of see it. I've got a trailer that goes on a hitch on the back of this so that I can take Taz and you can see Taz is up in the Jeep hoping that we're going on an adventure. We're going to go walk here in a minute. So I've got the uh, that that will go into the Vardo wagon uh, that I'm building and I can take it along and then when I get to wherever I'm going camping or fishing or whatever then I can unload the uh, mini bike and take it out and it I can run all day on a tank of gas on that thing on little trails and go back in exploring and stuff so I'm really excited uh, to get this uh, Jeep back up and, and being useful. I, I uh, need to do a little bit of work on it. It needs probably needs some new tires, uh, a, a couple of new tires, but uh, it's in real good shape. I only paid $2,000 for this from a guy, uh, and it's just got the four-cylinder in it, uh, so it won't do well on the freeways. doesn't go fast enough for freeways, but it's great for my back country roads and great for uh, rock climbing and, and going back in places like that. So those are my rigs that I use, that I'm going to be using for my overland Shepherd Wagon Vardo that I'm working on. All right, let's get uh, working on that Vardo. Okay, folks, I'm just going to show you how I uh, cut these uh, end wall panels out of this uh, half-inch plywood. The easy way, uh, and it is quite easy. First, you, you want to measure at your top, okay? This is the top. This is the edge that will go over, over the trailer frame, over the side panel, okay? So you need to measure the distance from the bottom up to there and then out and then however uh, the rest will go up to the top of the panel and you cut this out the easy way is to do it with a jigsaw like one of these i'm using a black and decker jigsaw and then get a fine tooth blade uh, for wood 
That way you don't rough up the edges. See, I got a nice clean edge along there. Uh, and what you do is just measure down from the top. The easy way to do this is measure down from the top and then just do use your square. Use this to lay out your lines for your inside and for this uh, cut out here. Okay, so that's the easy way to cut it. And then you're going to do the same thing, same thing after you measure your bottom. So you need to know the width of your floor. And remember what I said that you're going to go a half inch over. I'm going to overlap the floor by a half inch. Now the reason I'm doing that is uh, because I want the inside panel to fit inside against this edge of this panel that I'm putting on on this side. So I'm going to measure what the distance is on this and then I'm going to add an inch to it and that will give me a half inch on each side for my half inch plywood to butt up against on this side. That gives me a nice clean or clean corner here. So I, I know what my measurement is for the bottom so then all I have to do is measure over that amount okay and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side that I did over here. I'm going to go from the top uh, and uh, just do my lines in and then cut this down so that I have the notch on the other side. And then I will have both notches that fits over the frame. And this goes all the way, this panel goes all the way to the bottom of the floor framing. Now the reason we do that is because the floor framing actually acts as the, the entire, it ties the entire uh, structured together. Instead of having an extra 2x4 up here which can get wobbly when you're driving down the road, the entire sheet panel will fit against this 2x4 here on the floor all the way around on all sides and it will be tied down with construction adhesive. And uh, that's the other thing that you, you will need to get if you don't already have it. The other thing that you will need for this project if you don't already have it is a caulk gun. C-A-U-L-K. Caulk gun. Uh, and it is, you, you put your caulk in here, I don't have a tube of caulk out here right now to show you, but you just pull this back, put your tube of caulk in it, cut the end off the tube. You want to use construction adhesive, uh, and it can be any type of a good exterior grade wood construction adhesive. Uh, the uh, iron nails works really well, and that's what I'm going to be using. And so you want to use this, and then you want to caulk all the way along this edge, really good, put it on pretty heavy, okay? You're going to caulk all the way along on all the edges as you attach your panels, okay? That way it will be nice and strong. And that is the same way, folks, that they construct most small airplanes is with construction adhesive and screws. So that's how strong it is. It will hold up to all the pressure and strain that uh, you might put on it bouncing down the road with this thing. So that's why we're going to be using construction adhesive and screws. So now I've got part of that panel cut out. I'm going to uh, cut out the rest of the panel and put that up here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay folks, so there is the bottom of one end wall cut out. And you can see that it has the openings that will go over the trailer, up and over, on both sides. The bottom here will attach to the, the uh, floor framing on this side over here. And then there will be framing on the inside that holds it uh, as well, and framing that goes lengthwise along the side walls. So that is the bottom half. Now you may notice that I did not cut the door in this, and I'm not going to right now, uh, because it's a lot easier to put up without the door cut. Otherwise you just have a small strip of plywood down there that you're working with if you cut the door out. So it's easier to put this up and then cut the door out later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this with screws and construction adhesive to that end, let it dry overnight, and then I will frame the inside of this, and then I will cut my top piece, which goes up, and over it and put that against the framing screw and construction adhesive on that then after that's completely dried and set for a day I will cut out the door and I haven't completely decided what size door I'm going to use in the plans I show this with a 24 inch door uh, but because I'm using a wood stove which is over there you can probably see it I've got a small wood stove that I'm going to be installing in here. I may want to go with a little bit narrower door, and I'm thinking about a 20-inch door. I've got to think about it for a day. So this is as far as I'm going to get today. Plus, I don't have any liquid nails for my caulk gun in order to put this to attach it. So I've got to go get some liquid nails before I go any farther. But I think this gives you enough in this video to show how this is cut out. Uh, the only thing I'd recommend is that you uh, do wear goggles and a mask because this is very 
uh, dusty is put up puts the especially the jigsaw puts off a lot of sawdust you don't want to get a little piece of that in your eye or you're gonna end up having problems so make sure and a mask would also really help so make sure you wear goggles and mask when you're cutting these things out whatever you're cutting all right folks that's it for today and uh, I'm gonna go get some liquid nails and uh, in the next video I'll put up this end wall I'll probably have both of them cut by then and I'll put up both end walls and maybe the top uh, side or the side walls and we'll show you how that's done in the next video Thanks for coming by. Please do like and subscribe my, to my videos. Go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Lots of cabin plans and other project plans on there. Free plans for the Shepherd Wagon is there under the micro cabin uh, plans. Just click on the link at the top that says micro cabin plans. Uh, the Shepherd Wagon plans are completely free, so go get you a set. There's no reason not to. All right, folks, have a great night. Well, hey, folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. This is going to be the uh, final video in the construction series uh, for my camping wagon, or what uh, is commonly called a sheep herder wagon Vardo. And uh, I've got a lot done since uh, the last video. So I'm going to show you what I've got done and what I'm going to show you in this video and kind of explain the process so that you can understand how the structural members all go together. So as you can see, I've got the uh, camping wagon into this uh, trailer. And this trailer is just a little bit uh, uh, odd size. It's not actually a 5x8. It's a little bit shorter and a little bit narrower. So I had to adjust my own plans, uh, but it still worked. And I built this uh, completely on the ground and then slid it in. And surprisingly, it fits perfectly. And I slid it in all by myself, which I'm pretty proud of because uh, the way I designed it, it's, it's extremely strong, but also lightweight. And I took it for a little road trip uh, just to test it out with my small pickup truck. And it towed just perfectly, uh, tracked really well, and was lightweight, hardly even knew it was behind the truck. So that's exactly what I wanted, was a nice design. So you can see what I've done here. I've got that door installed. That door was salvaged that I pulled out of a dumpster. It's a solid wood door with a nice window in it. And uh, I had to cut it down, trim it to size, and then I took the bottom piece that I cut off down there at the bottom, and I put it up there and made a nice arch. Uh, so it kind of adds that Vardo effect to it. That's what I was after and uh, I've added some uh, black handle hardware to it and a few things uh, I've got it all painted now as you can see came up with some uh, really great paint idea from uh, the ace hardware guy Shout out to the ace hardware old paint guy who uh, turned me on to this uh, Paint that is used by contractors not the, the fancy brand name stuff that they get off the shelf he got this stuff that's a uh, basically a generic paint that they sell to contractors uh, that holds up much, much better uh, under uh, tough conditions, weather, and uh, will resist fading and scratching and stuff like that. So very happy with the paint job. Got that all done. All the sides are on. And I've got uh, two of my uh, roof rafters on, or box roof rafters on, as you can see there. And these are uh, uh, designed so that it holds the weight and is also, they are glued and screwed on all ends. And uh, today in this video, I'm going to be uh, putting on my roof panels and I'm also going to be installing the windows. So I need to seal this up before we have a rainstorm here. And uh, the other thing I did is I did get my, and I had to wait for this, I got my uh, jack with the wheel on it for the front tongue. And I needed that so that I could move the trailer around to position it. You can see this thing fits in perfectly. And uh, I needed that jack before I could uh, put it on the trailer because I needed to support it, but also to, to move the uh, trailer around so that I could position it perfectly. And uh, everything looks real good. So I'm going to be putting in that window. I've got a really nice window, which I'll show you, uh, that matches that front door. And it's got uh, real cross-piece muttons on. It's a really nice window. So I'm going to put a window in there. And then if I like it a lot, which I really think I will, I'm going to put two more sideways over on the sides here and I'm going to put shutters on all sides of them so I'll have a window on all four sides eventually but for now I've just got the one window I'm going to put in there and I'm going to put my roof sheathing on and then I'll be able to work on the interior and put my dry kitchen and stuff like that in later I don't I'm not going to do that in this video probably but I will uh, at least get the window in and the roof all sheathed and everything like that so you can see the construction process. Then how you do your interiors may be completely different. So I'll show you the interior just really quick here. So I've got uh, the interior all done. As you can see, the, the framing structure members on this are all glued and screwed. Everything is, is uh, construction adhesive and screws. The same way that they build 
airplanes and boats okay extremely strong and tight structure and there's the window I'll get up in here to show you I found this light, nice little shed window uh, on uh, Amazon for uh, uh, it was about $47 with free shipping and it comes with the sliding glass and so that'll look really nice up here in this opening so I've got to cut an opening up there and I've got to get you in here you can see my box roof rafters I've got one on one side and one on the other side I need to put uh, another one there and another one there and then I can sheath my roof and uh, then I'm going to probably use shingles uh, tar paper and shingles because I already have those uh, from another project left over and I got enough to do this so that will save me some money there altogether material costs on this so far I've kept a running total has been right about three hundred dollars okay half inch plywood two by three structural framing two by four floor framing and uh, I used OSB you can use plywood I used OSB uh, for the floor because it was about half the price of plywood but I used plywood on everything else because it lasts uh, longer handles the weather better and for my roof sheathing I'm going to be using OSB because it will be covered with tar paper edges all painted and uh, sheathed in so that it, I don't have to worry about it and it's the same material they use on house roofs so it should hold up for this right and uh, I also made my bed out of uh, OSB sheathing and my bed you can put your bed up higher a lot of people like a platform bed and it gives them lots of storage underneath I'm an old guy and I like to sit on the edge of my bed so I put my bed right down on the uh, side uh, supports and uh, my bed is only 32 inches wide because I have a cot mattress that size already but you could do a uh, so you could do a, 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 a twin mattress that would come out to about right here or you could even do a full-size mattress okay and you would still have all this room over here on both sides for a small wood stove or a dry kitchen or whatever else you're going to do I'm going to be putting in a dry kitchen and uh, my small wood stove is going to go right here which I'll show you eventually but uh, that's the plans for now so what I'm going to be doing in this video I'm going to sheathe the roof uh, and I'm going to put in that window that's pretty much all of the uh, construction that you need to know in order to finish this project and then you'll be able to go ahead and get the free plans on my website simplesolarhomesteading.com get a copy of the free plans click on the uh, micro cabin plans get you a copy of that and then if you want to build one of these you can build it using the same structure uh, process that I use in the plans and you can adjust it if you need to for your own trader it's designed for a 5 by 8 uh, trader like you can find on Lowe's or Home Depot and then you can decide however the heck you want to do your interior now I'm going to be leaving this uninsulated for a while but I designed this so that it can be insulated you can put R8 foam board insulation you can put that glue it right up against the uh, in between the pockets and you can put R11 or R13 insulation into the roof panels so you can fully insulate this now I'm going to do that eventually I'm going to insulate it but for now I'm just going to leave it the way it is and I might insulate it maybe next year uh, for camping season but for this year I'm just going to leave it the way it is but it is designed to be insulated and then you can put up some nice uh, tongue and groove pine paneling over it or something like that to really finish up the interior any way you want uh, but for seasonal camping you don't really need it insulated uh, it does add a little bit to the weight and the expense of the the project but it's nice to know that you can do it if you want to do that all right okay now it's time to get busy and work on this project I'm gonna go ahead and put that window in and put these roof uh, sheathing up I'll show you that and then uh, that'll be the end of that of this video for the construction process and uh, in the next video I'm gonna take a camp and show you how it works okay folks so here you can see I've got that uh, nice little window in uh, really adds to the, the look and shape of the the, the Bardo I think and uh, I got that on Amazon and it is an 18 by 27 inch window and uh, it comes it has the muttons it has a screen it slides up uh, it's uh, made for sheds uh, I, they the vinyl windows I could find them locally here were more expensive didn't look as nice and wouldn't look well with a Vardo so I went with this uh, shed window with metal framing and then I'm going to put uh, shutters on both sides of it I'm gonna make shutters to go on both sides of it which will look real nice and then I think I'm gonna buy two more of these windows eventually and I'm gonna put them in the size lengthwise uh, in the sides with small shutters on them I think that will really look not really look nice but that's the window that I, I have for this uh, project and it looks really nice and then you can see I've also got the uh, roof sheathed 
Uh, I'm still doing some work on the roof sheathing, but I've got the roof sheathed up. It's got about a one inch overhang so the water will run off the sides and won't run straight down the sides. And uh, that's, I used OSB for my sheathing. It'll be covered with tar paper. Then I haven't decided if I'm going to go with shingles or metal roofing. I've got to see. I've got some shingles, but I may decide I want to go with metal roofing. So I'm going to wait and do that uh, a little bit later. See if I can find a good price on uh, some materials for my roofing. Now I've also done some detail work. I put on uh, some of the molding, as you can see here. I'll show this window up closer. Uh, I started putting on some of this. This is a oh, it's a fake oak molding, but it's like an oak molding, uh, PVC, so it'll handle the weather outside and doesn't have to be painted. And so I've got that on here. You can see the overhang of the the roof, so it's got a, a little bit of an overhang, not much. And then I left on this front end here. I didn't put a large overhang, and the reason is because. Uh, at this end is going to get wind pressure against it. I don't want the wind to catch underneath that edge and there will be a molding trim that goes, a three inch molding trim that goes all the way around this here. And I don't want the wind to catch underneath this edge because that's going to put pressure on the, the roof and pressure on the trailer to, to lift up and could even actually rip, uh, rip your roof off if you're going fast enough. So just a small one inch overhang on the front and about a three inch overhang on the back. Okay, And that used an eight foot sheet of OSB, so I was able to say something. I got about a three inch overhang on the uh, back side here. And then this, uh, m this nice oak trim molding all the way along. And like I said, I'm going to probably put in a window right in here. It goes sideways with uh, shutters on both sides. And uh, right now, what I've got left to do is uh, trim out the, the finish for the door. And uh, that's what this molding is that I'm working on over there. I'm actually trying to warp a piece of this PVC molding because I've got to do an arch up there. So I'm using the sunshine because this will kind of warp naturally. I'm going to put some weight and some ropes on it and kind of pull an arch down in it. Uh, and in the hot sunshine it should melt down or uh, warm up enough that it'll, it'll uh, warp enough that I can get a, an arch out of it. And then I've got the rest of it there and I'm, I'm going to do a uh, molding trim that goes up and around on all, all sides all the way around the top and on both sides, all sides of the door and then a nice, nice arch over the top here. So that's what I've got left to do on this project. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, this works really well for what I plan on doing, which is my adventure videos when I get out uh, where I want to go someplace and show you uh, some new scenery, uh, where I'm camping and fishing and taking my mini bike and going out on adventures. So that's that's the plan for the use for this. I'll uh, show you the wood stove that I'm going to be using in it here. And uh, then we'll call it good for this video. This this gives you enough construction uh, information in this series of videos that if you want to build one of these, you can certainly do that. And uh, I think it's a really nice project. Altogether estimate, I already had the trailer. You can get the 5x8 traders at Lowe's or uh, Home Depot. They're running around uh, $750 right now for a 5x8 trader. Uh, or if you can find one used on Craigslist or something like that. I got this old trader for like $400 from a guy that was uh, moving and was using it for uh, hauling his snowmobiles. So it's a heavy duty trader. Uh, but it works really well for this project. And uh, material costs for the, all the lumber and wood I kept a running total was right around $300. Probably about $350 with the tax uh, and everything on it and uh, some of the trim work and stuff that I didn't include in it. Uh, and so, you know, it, you can do these any way you want. I designed the plan so that they're modifiable and uh, you can design and put it together any, any way you want. So, uh, go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Get you a set of the free plans. Just click on the micro cabins, download. It's actually two plans in one. There's a, a, a shed version to be built on the ground or a Vardo version. So you get both in one set of plans. Go get you a free set of plans. While you're there, look at the other cabins that have been built uh, from my plans and designs and the client cabins. Lots of new designs on there. Walden cabin is very popular. The A-frame cabin is very popular. Lots of people have built those. Uh, the Wombat um, uh, teardrop camper, very popular designs. Lots of people are building those. And also, if you want, get involved in the contest. Uh, I've got a free, free to enter contest for anybody that wants to uh, build or design their own uh, off-grid house on wheels or off-grid house on the move. It doesn't have to be on wheels. It just it could be a uh, 
uh, a house like this or it can be a on a larger trailer under 200 square feet with off-grid systems it could even be a uh, stealth camper uh, in a cargo trailer it could be a houseboat uh, whatever you can come up with with your designs and it's free to enter and uh, you can win a uh, 100 watt solar panel with a controller and some good books from uh, Lloyd Kahn and ebooks from me and uh, some other prizes so go enter that all right folks I hope you've enjoyed following this project and uh, you know, watch, uh, subscribe to my channel, like my uh, videos, and uh, we'll be doing updates. I'm going to be finishing this up uh, with all the trimmings and everything to make it look real nice. And then in a future video, I'll take it camping, and I'll show you off all of the, uh, the finish work as it goes along. But I think I've given you enough in these videos that if you want to construct this project, you, can know, you now know enough about it that you can go ahead and do that. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Okay, so this is my... Uh, camping wagon or a shepherd wagon or some people call them a vardo and uh, as you can see I've been doing quite a bit of work if you've been following along uh, I designed this uh, I designed the plans for it, and the plans for this are free on my website under the uh, micro cabins link at the top and uh, so you can go get the free plans if you want to build one like this and I designed these for the seven by eight foot uh, trailers like you can get at Lowe's that have the side walls. You can see this has the side walls that goes up. And then it goes up approximately three feet and then it goes up to over uh, six foot, about six foot uh, four inches to the peak up there. So lots of room inside, eight foot, approximately eight foot long and approximately seven feet wide. And it's uh, designed in the old shepherd wagon uh, style, Vardos. And so really nice. And I got this door uh, recycled from an old wood door that I got for free that uh, I cut the top, I cut the bottom off and put the top up there for the arch. And then I've used uh, cedar fence boards, three inch cedar fence boards for my trim, which looks really nice. Now I haven't done the trim on, on all of it yet because I still got my lumber sitting over there and I haven't got all of it done yet. But then the other thing that I want to show you here is that I used uh, aluminum roofing for mine. And uh, this comes in a roll and it's two feet wide and I think I got a 50 foot roll and it cost me about uh, $45 I think and one roll was enough to do the entire roof. Now I haven't done my trim, you can see it needs trim along there. I haven't done my cedar trim along there and I'm going to do some cedar trim, fancy it all up and everything like that. Uh, but this has, uh, this is going to be my uh, uh, off-grid uh, abode, camper for when I go up, because uh, I like to go up in the lakes and stuff, let the camera adjust here. And I haven't done a lot to the inside. I've got my wood stove, which I got some of you have seen, and I did a video on this wood stove here. Uh, and uh, I've got a 100 watt solar panel in there, and I've got a 12 uh, volt fridge in there. But I haven't got them situated because I need to build cabinets on both sides. That's my project for this winter. And I'm building cabinets on both sides. And right now I've just got a couple of old uh, uh, camper mattresses in there. That's not a bed, but it can be used as a bed. But I just got them set in there for now. I got the window installed, which is a shed window. Let this adjust. Uh, I got a shed window uh, off of uh, eBay for this, and I'll show you the other side of it. And then you can see how this is all framed. Now I'm going to be doing foam insulation in this, and I'm probably going to insulate the entire interior and then put paneling on it. But that's going to come down the road as I get enough money to do this project. So I'll just show you on the outside what I did here. This is the window, shed window, and I really like it because it has the muntins in it. The old-fashioned muntins and then I got a couple of cheap uh, uh, what the hell are those called shutters I got a couple of cheap shutters to go on both sides uh, just to give it a nice look and then I'm going to do that same cedar trim all the way around both ends will be all done in cedar and it gives it a really you can see it gives it a really nice look and it's a nice little Vardo Shepherd wagon, just the right size to pull behind my small pickup because I don't I don't like driving the big pickup because it's a gas hog. So I can pull this one because it's lightweight and small the way I've designed it. Uh, you can pull this just behind a, a really small pickup like mine or an SUV and uh, go take it up camping. So that's what I've been doing on this uh, project here and just wanted to give you an update. And like I said, you can go get the free plans on my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Up at the top, you'll see micro cabins. There's two different plans in here. There's a plan for an 8x8 eight eight, uh, style cabin and also this shepherd wagon, camping wagon. They're both in the same plans if you're looking for this. So just go up there at the top and you will see uh, micro cabin plans. Click on that. Those plans are completely free, folks. 
I designed them so that anyone can get these plans and you can build one of these. While you're there, also look, because I've got some new plans on there for the Walden cabin and some other plans on there for micro cabins and uh, uh, inexpensive cabins that any off-gridder uh, can build themselves, even if you don't have a lot of skills. So go on there, take a look at my website, simplesolarhomesetting.com. Check out uh, the, the new features and also... And also while you're there, go check out the entrance that we have, the submissions that we have for the contest, for the off-grid houses on wheels contest. We've got a couple entries in there now. I hope to get a whole bunch more before the end of this month because you've got to get your designs in before the end of this month, okay? And uh, make sure that you get your designs in and uh, go check out the submissions that have already been submitted. You could win a 100-watt solar panel, uh, uh, books by Lloyd Kahn, ebooks from me and some other prizes so go in there and make sure that you submit your designs before the end of this month this off this is october uh or yeah yeah this is october and so make sure you get your your designs in before then all right folks i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you got something out of it and as always you know we live off grid so that we can thrive in good times and survive the bad times all right folks have a great day Hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, my name's Lamar. This is my dog, Tazzy. My adventure dog that I take everywhere with me. And uh, it's early spring here at the cabin. And finally, the, the weather's cleared up enough and warmed up enough that I can start doing some work uh, on my place and uh, on my wagon. And some of you have seen this in some of my other videos. And uh, I'm still uh, working on this project. But I started thinking because, you know, I've always got people asking me, you know, uh, or, you know, asking for m new videos. And, you know, I've done videos since 2007. I've been making videos even before uh, Google owned YouTube. That's how long I've been making videos. Over 150 videos on my channel. And I've covered so many different subjects that sometimes I kind of just... I run out of ideas. I don't know what else to, to uh, do videos of, other than just tell you what I'm what I'm working on for my own project now. And uh, this project I'm I'm really happy with, and and started on it last year, but then it got too cold and I couldn't work on it, and I ran out of materials when winter hit. But I'm ready now to get started back on this project. But I think this is an important project, even if you don't plan on building a shepherd wagon like this, which I'll show you here in a minute because a lot of the systems that I'm going to use are the same systems that I use in my off-grid cabin and the same systems that I used when I first started going off-grid. So if you follow along on the progress of this shepherd wagon, you'll also learn about small solar systems and uh, how to heat water and how to live a, a very simple and sustainable uh, life in just a small cabin or a, a camper or a shepherd wagon like this. So that's what I'm going to be doing this year and I'm going to start uh, working again on this shepherd wagon and uh, you can follow along I hope you will subscribe and uh, follow because we're going to also once I get this going I'm going to take it out camping in some nice places we're going to take Tazzy here adventuring because she loves that and we're going to go uh, do see some nice scenery and uh, I'll explain uh, you know how you can live a pretty sustainable life because a lot of people don't may not have land maybe they don't want land maybe they want to travel and so this is also a good, uh, I think, video and experience for people that are looking for that kind of experience. So that's what we're hoping to do. All right, Teddy, should we show them the wagon? Okay, folks, so this is my shepherd wagon or camping wagon design. Now, this is designed uh, after a traditional shepherd wagon, but with my own style to it. And if you notice that the, if you've ever seen the shepherd wagon or what they call the gypsy vardos, they have a round roof generally, and I went with a barn style roof instead. This is my own style design, and I did it this way because I think it's a lot easier to build for people than the round roof, and it, it was also easier to use uh, flat panels on because I already had some materials, and use flat panels and aluminum roofing was easier to put on with the barn style roof than it is with a round roof without any of the leaking problems that a lot of Vardos have. So that's the reason I did this. Now, these shepherd wagons were uh, really uh, a, something that is part of our history. They came along uh, from the Basque region, B-A-S-Q-U-E, and uh, they were a region where they came over what they call the gypsies, uh, were sheep herders. And they brought these over when they came over to the United States, or they built them over here, and they would go up and they would herd sheep for a long time 
uh, spend maybe two or three months out in the mountains uh, in these shepherd wagons and uh, lived in them while well, they took care of the, the uh, flocks of sheep. And uh, my grandfather and great-grandfather were sheep herders uh, in this area, and uh, that's where I kind of got the desire to build one of these. There's still a few of these old shepherd wagons around here that gave me ideas for how I wanted to build mine. Now, mine is built on a uh, trailer that's about five foot wide by eight foot long, and it has the steel, solid steel uh, side panels on it. And I got this old trailer uh, from a guy that was using it for hauling his uh, snowmobiles around. And uh, he was moving and didn't need it anymore, so I got it for like $400. But I only used it a couple of times for hauling trash, and then it just was sitting in my place. And I'm like, I want to do something with that trader. So I decided I'm going to build me a shepherd wagon. And uh, I, I went and looked at some traditional ones here in town, got my own ideas for how I wanted to build it, and I just built it to fit this, uh, sh this uh, trader that I already had here on my property. Now, uh, I started building this last year. And uh, materials got really expensive. And I don't know if you've went and looked, but this is built from half-inch plywood. And uh, the half-inch plywood at the time I bought it, I spent about $25 a sheet. And now it's almost $50 a sheet for a half-inch plywood. So, you know, it, it got expensive. And I, it also got winter time here before I got it finished. And I ran out of money to finish the project. So this is as far as I've got on it. Now I need to finish it up so I can go camping with it. And we have it's just now barely getting over winter here. In fact, we're not really over winter. You can see I've got some snow on the ground. Yesterday, uh, we had a freak snowstorm just out of nowhere. It dumped about four inches of snow on us. Uh, in about six hours time and then it all melted right off and turned all sunny again but it's still kind of uh, uh, off and on weather here so I don't want to do too much on the outside of this uh, to pull all my materials out yet to finish it until I know for sure this weather's going to warm up but here's what I've done so far you can see that this is it's all made of half inch plywood two by three lumber framing which I'll show you on the inside and uh, a lot of my materials like I got from my cabin I also uh, got a lot of recycled materials for this to keep the prices down. So this door I got out of a dumpster. It's a solid wood door with a good glass uh, window in it. And it was, of course, too big for the, uh, too tall for the opening. So what I did is I cut it down. I cut it down on the sides and I cut the uh, bottom off. And I used the bottom to scroll a uh, half, a, uh, an arc there for the top out of that piece of wood from the bottom. And I put it up there on the top to give me an arc to just give it some, some design flair, okay? A little bit of panaz. Uh, for it, to make it look different and uh, you know it, this this is something that you could do and you can add your own styles and tricks to whatever you want to do and the uh, trim boards there that I used are cedar fence boards three inch cedar fence boards are like three inch by six foot long and those work out excellent they weather really nice they'll turn kind of a grayish color over time and they, they just look they add to the traditional look now I still need to do quite a bit of uh, trim work not a lot but I need to do some trim work here on the outside I need to take those same cedar fence boards which I have and I need to go along those edges up there. And for the roof, as you can see I did a barn style roof. And uh, what I'm going to do is after I put the trim on, then I, I will uh, also probably put a window in each side. And I'll show you the windows that I'm going to use. To break up this flat surface here, I'm going to put a window on each side probably. And for the roofing I used uh, aluminum, what they call tin roofing. Uh, but it's actually made of aluminum, and it comes in like a 2 foot by 30 foot sheet, which was enough to do the entire uh, top of this. And uh, it worked really well. It went on really fast, uh, and I used the screws with the lip on them to attach that right to, and that's wafer board that's underneath it, or particle board that's underneath it for the roofing. And that gives me a really nice surface to screw that down nice and tight so I don't have any leaking. And it overlaps. Each sheet overlaps the next one down so there was no leaking. And over wintertime, I was concerned would I see any leaking in here. But there's not even a drop of water on the inside of this thing after winter. And it had icicles hanging off it and everything else. It had a lot of snow sitting. But the snow just melts right off that aluminum just slides right off so it doesn't even stay on the roof. Now, uh, as I said, this is on like a 5x8 trailer. And uh, I'll show you from the front of it what it looks like here. Okay, so this is from the front end. And uh, you can see what it is. I put a, uh, I got this window off of eBay. And uh, I think I paid like $25 for it and maybe $10 for the shutters. 
and uh, it has the muntins in it. That's those little cross pieces. And it does slide up and down and it has a screen in it. And I think it looks really good for this type of, of uh, structure here. It has that old time flavor to it. And so you can see from the side there, it has a really nice shape to it. Very much a, a standard, and you can call it a gypsy Vardo or you can call it a shepherd wagon, whatever. Uh, Vardo was probably the, the appropriate name for them. And uh, the sheep herders, they used to live in them year round, uh, you know, some places, and they, they, they would move from area to area and take their families along with them, and then they would take them up, and when they was herding sheep, that's how they made money. And uh, this, uh, the only thing I'd done to this trailer is I, uh, I did put a new tire on it, and I had to do, I put a tongue uh, jack there on the front. I did put that on, that's new. Uh, because I wanted some way to where I can take it off the truck and leave it so it'd be stable, and so I did get a, a truck, a uh, tail, what the heck am I saying, a tongue jack for the front uh, to go on there to stabilize it. And uh, I put the window in on this end, and I'm probably going to use those same windows, but I'm going to turn them sideways, and I'm going to put a window on both sides, a window on that side and a window on the other side. And you can see I need to do my trim work with the same cedar fence boards with the trim. So I'll just give you a little peek on the inside, what I'm planning here. Now I've got my uh, supplies stored in here for right now. Because over winter I ran out of time and so I just uh, put all my supplies inside here. And over time I've been kind of picking up a few items that I'm going to be using in here. So that's a 12 volt fridge that I'm going to be using in here. And then there's a uh, 100 watt solar panel up there. Here you can see the window from the inside and I'll get up inside here. But here's my wood stove. Okay, and this is a guide gear, that good guide gear wood stove that I did the video on. And that's going to be going in here. And I've got to uh, do a uh, hole up through my roof or through my sidewall here. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to run that stove pipe. But that's one of the things I need to be doing uh, is getting this guide gear wood stove in here. And then I've got my mold trim and my cedar fence boards and everything in here. And here's a little table that I'm going to be taking along with me that sets up and folds down. But what I need to do in here is I need to build a, a, a dry sink. And that's going to be my next project. Is I'm going to build a dry sink right here. Uh, about three foot. Now, this has, I set this up for a single bed for just me, uh, but there's enough room in here that you could actually put a full size bed. And this is about seven feet on the inside, so you can put a full size bed in here easily. And you could actually do a bunk bed right above it. So if you had like uh, a couple of kids and a couple of adults, they could sleep in here just fine. You could put a bunk bed uh, right along this frame wall here, you could build it out. And have another bunk bed right above it right next to the window there and then the adults would sleep down below it on this lower bunk or you could raise this bunk up like, like a lot of people like to do in the vardos they raise them up and then they have a lot of storage underneath you can put a table or whatever if you want now i like mine down lower that way i can uh, sit on it and have my coffee while i may uh, you know i can fix my coffee on my wood stove over here and sit and poke at the fire and have fix my coffee and then sit on the edge of my bed while I'm having my coffee. Now this will have power in it. I will have this. Uh, that's a 100 watt solar panel there. And I've already got the battery for that. And that will run that fridge. And it will also run LED lights. And it will let me use my laptop computer. And uh, recharge my camera. And my phone and other gadgets like that. So that's the plan. Is that I will be able to stay off grid uh, in the cabin, but still have some, enough power to run my laptop and stuff like that because I'm going to be doing adventure videos. Need some way to connect to the internet and do my videos and stuff like that. And I plan on taking this up. I've got a lot of little places here I can go camping to uh, take this and show you uh, how the Vardo works and how I'm going to live in it off grid for a while camping and then also do my adventure videos. So I'm going to be using my uh, laptop and my computer and my gadgets and stuff like that. Now, this is designed so that it can be insulated. I'm not sure if I'm going to insulate it this year or not. Uh, I may just go ahead and work on everything else and then insulate it maybe next year. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, like I said, materials are really expensive right now. This is made from 2x3 lumber. All of this is 2x3 lumber framing. Every bit of it. And then I, I used half inch plywood for the exterior and everything is glued and screwed on. I mean this thing is tight. This thing has no movement, no wiggle whatsoever. It's, it's built really well. I took the time to use a lot of construction adhesive and screw and there will be additional framing. I have not put in my additional framing bar down here yet 
because when I get my insulation, I want to make sure that I'm fitting it to the space to the space that I'm using. And I'm because I'm putting a uh, dry sink over here, uh, I will also may want to bring the uh, framing down farther uh, so that I have a I can use that as a ledge to put my top of my sink on. Sink will probably be about three feet long. It'll be a dry sink, which means that it's it doesn't have any plumbing to it or a tank. Uh, you just fill up a sink, you basically fill up an old basin out of a bucket, and that's how you wash your dishes, just like the old sheep herders used to do. I'm trying to keep this kind of traditional, even though I'm going to be using some solar power and some other things. Now, some people always ask me, well, what about a toilet? Well, that's what this little thing over here is for. This is a, a Camco, and you've probably all seen these, toilet bucket lid. And it just goes on a five-gallon bucket. You put it on a five-gallon bucket and put your garbage sack in there or something that will hold the, the moisture. And uh, you just put that in here, and uh, what you do is you set it outside. When you need to use it, you put it inside, you use it, and then set it back outside. And since I'll only be staying for, you know, three or four days, I'll just bring it home and dump it into my solar composting toilet when I'm done with it. And so, you know, that's a cheap toilet right there. And I will also be using a solar shower. I have a solar shower that I'm going to be setting up in here. So I'll show you all that stuff as I go along. Once I get camping, I'll show you all how I use it and use the camper. Now... It, this is designed, like I said, to be insulated, and I used uh, plywood on the sidewalls, and I used uh, wafer board for my roofing because it was cheaper than plywood. Plywood got expensive, and uh, two by three lumber. It's all framed, two by three lumber, all the way across. Very, very solid and sturdy. This ain't going nowhere, and uh, the it, the roof can be insulated uh, with uh, one and a half inch uh, foam core foam board insulation. You put inside the just put it inside each of the panels and then you can panel over that with some nice paneling if you want you can panel over I've got some pine board paneling I may use on the inside of this probably so this has this has a lot of room for me and Tazzy or, or another person if they want to come stay with me uh, it you could put a full-size bed in here I'm probably just gonna stay with a single bed because it's just gonna be me and Tazzy that goes adventuring huh and we're you know that's that's my plan so this is what I'm gonna be doing over the next uh, month or so, if the weather stays good, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and finish this all up. So I'll get out here now. So that's my plans uh, for this next month or so, uh, is I'm going to be working on this uh, Bardo wagon, my camping wagon, and I'm going to get that done. Now, the reason, like I said, I'm showing you this is even if you're not building a shepherd wagon or uh, something like that, the projects that I'm putting into it, the off-grid projects, the solar panels, the off-grid toilet, things like that. You can still use those in any off-grid situation. When I first moved to this property, I lived in a small 10-foot camp trailer first. And I did that for almost two years. I, I went from a small camp trailer to a larger one before I built my cabin. And so the systems that I'm going to be showing you in this Shepherd Wagon are a lot of the same systems that I used when I first went off-grid. And they work just fine, folks. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with using those simple systems. And in fact, in some ways, they're, they're better because they're easier, a lot easier to take care of than some of the, the uh, more complex composting toilet systems and things like that, and big solar panel systems and things like that. They're a whole lot less uh, expensive uh, for people that are just starting out off-grid. So if you follow along this project, you'll learn about those small, simple off-grid systems is what I'm trying to say. And so I hope that will help some of you out. So if you're interested in building one of these uh, Shepherd wagons, you can go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com right at the top you'll see a link that says micro cabin plans click on that it includes the plans for this and a, uh, a uh, foundation built uh, wagon that's very or not wagon but a uh, structure that's very similar to this but is designed to be built on the ground for a small micro cabin and it includes the plans for the shepherd wagon uh, and that's you just they're free. You can go. Anybody can go get those. And that way, if you want to build one of these or just follow along with what I'm doing on the project, you're welcome to do that. Uh, go get you those free sets of plans. Again, that's on simplesolarhomesteading.com. Link is micro cabin plans right at the top. All right, folks. Let's hope this weather gets better here because I'm really itching and anxious to get working on this project. And uh, you know, it just keeps surprising me with these little snowstorms. But it will warm up here. Uh, it's starting to get nice here. Things are starting to green up, and then we can get we can start doing some some off grid projects and doing some camping and some adventure videos. All right, folks. Thanks for stopping by. And have a great day.
folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. This is my segment on Ask Lamar. Uh, and I've got a couple of questions. Uh, one is from a lady who is uh, uh, living up in Idaho. Her name is Mary, and uh, she is just starting out in homesteading. And uh, she's trying to get the, the supplies together. She's got a piece of land. Uh, sounds like a pretty good piece of property. She's got some springs and... and uh, and water supply on the property and uh, she's she's getting ready to move there and she's trying to get ideas for how to get started on her property inexpensively uh, which is what I recommend for most people and uh, so we were talking about some ways that she could get started for shelter uh, while she's working she's she has a son that I think is graduating from high school soon uh, that's going to be helping her and she's going to build a uh, a simple structure to live in but she needs something to live in while she's there She's thinking about a tent, and so we were talking about some ideas of, of uh, what people can live in on their property while they're building their cabin or their house or whatever it is that they're going to be living in permanently. So one of the things that I want to talk about first is uh, using a camp trailer, which is what I recommend uh, to get started in your, uh, on your homestead. And there's a couple of good reasons. One thing is the, the camp trailer is a good, sturdy uh, waterproof generally uh, place to live uh, it can be heated better than a tent uh, it can it provides a little bit more shelter generally they're set up with a sink uh, they might even have a bathroom in them uh, they have uh, lights and things like that that can be run off of solar uh, a lot of times they already have a, uh, a tanks for gray water and wastewater set up and so what's nice about a camp trailer is after you're done living in the camp trailer and you got your cabin built then you can transfer all of those equipment into your cabin and that's what I'm going to show you here this is my kitchen okay and in my kitchen you can see there's my sink now this sink came straight out of my old camp trailer when I got done with my cabin then I built these cabinets and I installed the sink now you can see this sink is smaller than a regular house sink uh, it has shallower uh, pans in it, basins, uh, but it has all the features that you need for washing dishes. The appliances that come out of campers are designed for smaller places, so they work perfectly in a small cabin. So there's my sink right there, and then this is my oven and stove, okay, and I'm going to back up here so you can see it. Uh, and this also came right out of my camp trailer, and it has four burners, this is propane, it has four burners, and it has a nice oven underneath it here, it's got a good size oven and runs off of propane. It is about half the size. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way to the floor. It's designed to be built in. And I had to build these uh, cabinets. I just used two by fours and some lumber. Uh, and I've just got material down here. I haven't finished up the fronts of my cabinets, but I've just got material down here. But anyway, I used the stove uh, and oven and the sink. And I got a bunch of lights and everything else. And I even got my water tank. And I hope, hope you can see this down here. We've got enough light. Probably not. I'm going to have to get some light on there. Let me get some light. Okay, now you can see it. All right, there you can see that's a water tank. That water tank is a 25-gallon water tank that came out of my camper. Okay, and it's underneath my sink, and I use a SureFlow. You can see some of the plumbing back there. You can't see the pump because it's back behind it, but I use a SureFlow uh, water pump to pump that up through my lines over to my shower and up to my sink. Uh, the SureFlow pumps run off of DC, and that also comes out of my camper. So I got my water tank, my sink, my stove, my SureFlow pump, and even the plumbing. That plumbing there came right out of my old camper. So that saved me a lot on buying uh, appliances and stuff like that. I didn't have to go buy anything. I just pulled them out of my old camper. And I'm going to show you my camper here in a minute. And then I got a on-demand water heater, which I hope you can see there. Okay, that's an on-demand water heater made by Ecotemp, and it also runs off of propane, and that uh, supplies the hot water for my sink and my shower. And then I built me a shower stall, which you're probably going to have a hard time seeing. I'll see if I can get some more light in here. Okay, shower stall, uh, shower nozzle up there with a shower base, and ignore the pan down there. I was doing some dishes and was rinsing out a pan in my shower. Ha ha. 
Okay, so I built my own shower stall in here, but sometimes you can pull the showers right out. But you can see the plumbing lines and plumbing and everything down there. That all came out of my camper. And I even got lights, as you can see up here. Okay, that light right there is also out of my camper. Uh, runs off of DC power right there, so I use DC power lights, okay? Uh, composting toilets, now I use a porta potty, which I've showed you before. I use a porta potty. But uh, a composting toilet or a uh, what they call a sawdust toilet works really well. And so now I'll, I'll take you outside and I'll show you what all you can get out of a camper. Okay, this is one of my old uh, campers here. And I still use this one a lot. Then my other old camper, it's back there. And I'll show you both of them here. But the one that I lived in was about the same size as this. It wasn't uh, real big. This is about a 15-footer uh, is all. And uh, I lived in it for two years before I was building my uh, cabin. And these are pretty nice. Now, this is kind of a mess because I haven't been in it all winter long. But you can see here, this has a nice small sink in it. Okay. It's got these cabinets that if you're going to be taking stuff out uh, for your cabin, you can even take the cabinets out. This has nice cabinets. You can see this has a real nice uh, four burner stove in it. This has a fridge. That is a three-way fridge that will run off of, uh, it's kind of a dirty fridge right now, but this will run off of uh, AC, DC, or propane, okay? So this, this is a built-in unit. It's not real big, but it's big enough for a couple of people. And you can build a cabinet and just take that right out and put that in your cabin. And uh, these have uh, lots of cabinets and things that you can take out that could be used. You can see all these lights that are up here, all DC and AC lights that you can take out. Uh, you could use those in your cabin. They even have a propane furnace in them. You can see down there. This has a propane furnace. Uh, this would be a vented furnace, so you'd have to, to run a vent pipe. You could take the propane furnace out of a camper to use in your cabin. Uh, this has a uh, RV style toilet with a holding tank underneath. And you can see it has a shower pan. Shower pan, this would be a nice setup if you was transferring this over to a cabin. You could easily transfer uh, this shower. Uh, and look at this little sink. Isn't this a great looking little RV sink? This would be great for a bathroom at a cabin where you don't have a lot of room to put a regular standard sink. This sink is designed to fit right into the corner. That's a great looking. And then the shower pan runs all the way underneath the toilet, but is, long, is big enough here for a person to stand in and get a decent shower. So all of this could be transferred over to a cabin real easily. Now I'll take you over to my other. Now this older camper, this camper is as old as I am, and it's had some damage. I only paid a few hundred dollars for this. The guy wanted to, to get it off his property because he got a new camper. Uh, and it's it suffered some damage in the fire I had here, but also had some uh, water damage up on top. So I'm only using it for storage, but I'm keeping it. And I'll tell you why, because this thing has some really nice appliances in it. These old campers like this, here again you can see, well if I get the trash out of it, it's a mess folks, it's a mess. This has a single appliance sink, but it's a real cute little sink in there uh, and uh, would work great for a cabin in there. And it just has a DC uh, pressure pump on it with uh, probably just cold water, I don't think it was set up for hot water. And then it has, again, one of these nice little propane stoves. This one's only a three burner stove, but this has a, a real nice little propane stove uh, that would fit right into a cabin. It also has, if I can get this stuff out of the way, show you here, also has an ice box instead of a fridge. They didn't put uh, propane fridges back when they made these. Instead, they put it in an ice box. And it's kind of a mess, I can tell you, but uh, an ice box can be cleaned up and it just has a drain in the bottom of it and you drop in a block of ice and that keeps your, it, because it's well insulated, uh, that keeps your food cold so you don't need a fridge all the time. And so that's what we're in these campers. So some other stuff you can get out. Here's tables, okay. Here's cushions and pads that could be used for a bed. All of this stuff can be transferred over, uh, you know, lights and things like that. You can transfer over and uh, get any of this stuff that you can to use for your uh, cabins out of your camper. Then after you got the, the camper stripped out, these make great little toy haulers or tool haulers or work traders. You can take the whole shell off of it if you want. 
or you can leave the shell on it and just use it for hauling stuff around or take this thing has a really heavy duty you can see it's got a real heavy duty frame underneath it so you can take that off throw a bed on it and you've got a, a, a hauler for your toys or your tools or your RV uh, supplies or whatever and uh, you know you don't, you pick one of these up on Craigslist for a few hundred dollars and uh, you also get the propane supplies and this one's already been stripped down for some stuff uh, the propane tanks can be used on your cabin the propane uh, equipment, the, the uh, connection equipment can all be used. The regulators, the, the uh, propane lines, just make sure the propane lines don't leak. You can reuse all those propane lines and uh, that'll give you a good start. So that'll give you something to live in while you're building your cabin and then you strip it down of everything that can be salvaged for your cabin and uh, you still get to use the, the trailer when it's done for something else for hauling stuff around and so that's a good way to get started that I recommend for people if you need to do it inexpensively is consider getting yourself a camper uh, and it doesn't have to be a real fancy one because you're not going to live in it forever okay check that the appliances work really well check everything out uh, consider how you're going to use those appliances when you're designing your cabin so that it will fit into your cabin and uh, that way you're saving a whole lot of money on appliances and you'll be able to do it right away. You won't have to wait for appliances and go find them and pay a bunch of money to have them put in. Uh, and you can, and because they're smaller, they'll fit right into your cabins. Okay, that's it for today, folks. It's a wonderful, beautiful day. I'm going to take the dogs for a walk. And uh, we'll see you next week. Everyone have a great day.